What's going on YouTube? This is Marcus back for another review. I'm here to talk about Real Housewives of Atlanta season nine, episode 12. So let's get into it. So um, I want to talk about Cynthia, Kenya and Matt. So Cynthia goes to the park to talk, meet up with Matt. He was playing basketball with one of his friends, I guess. And so she basically wanted to just talk to him and see where, where he is and where, he, you know, what headspace he's in as far as, you know, him constantly going to Kenya's house and breaking up or stuff. We saw it like a like a, a scene that was recorded, but it wasn't put on the actual show where um, Cynthia and Kenya were talking about this, you know, her uh, relationship with her and Matt and Cynthia asked Kenya, you know, would you be OK if I go talk to, Cin to Matt and Kenya says, yes, Cynthia goes to talk to Matt. And, you know, she was basically and she and, you know, and she made it clear from the beginning that, you know, the information uh, that I received from you, I'm going to take it back to Kenya. So she basically asked him, like, what is your biggest issue? You know, why you keep going off and breaking her stuff? His main things are, you know, he doesn't feel respected. He feels like she demeans him. And, you know, there's a lack of communication from both ends. What I will say is, you know, with, as far as Matt is concerned, is that he does take responsibility for his actions because he did say, you know, all this stuff that I've done is my fault. But, you know, you can't put blame somebody else because you don't know how to control your issues. If you have certain issues, if you have certain bu buttons that, you know, certain triggers that cause you to just pop off like that. And you're in a relationship with a person who obviously knows what these triggers are and they're constantly pushing those buttons. You don't need to be with that person. And, you know, Cynthia does bring it up to Matt's attention. Like, you know, Kenya does. You know, she is a little bit of a drama queen. Her, you know, her over the top personality is, you know, that's just who she is. You know, that's I mean, if you're going to be in a relationship with her, you're just going to have to get used to the fact that that's who she is. So. But even with that, she still lets him know, you know, I don't agree with what you did. You got to get yourself together like this ain't going to work. If y'all going to want, you know, be together, you, you, you know, y'all got to they have they have to get to a point where they can actually sit down. One one person talk while the other person listens and then the next person talk while they listen. It, you know, you're not going to get anything resolved. If both of y'all trying to get y'all points across at the same time. So Cynthia goes back to talk to Kenya. Well, Kenya comes over to Cynthia's house and she now I was confused why when she met up with Matt, she pulled out a notepad like they were in a therapy session. But anyway, so to make a long story short, Cynthia basically tells, explains to Kenya what happened. And, you know, she brings up the fact that, you know, I said that you were a drama queen. You know, Kenya gets upset like, you know, because I think she did ask Cynthia, you know, what did you say in my defense? And, you know, that was when the thing about her being a, a drama queen or being dramatic was brought up. And, um, you know, Kenya got upset, like, if I'm supposed to be my, yo, you're supposed to be my friend. You shouldn't be, you know, talking about me like that. You should have been standing up for me. You should have been defending me. Wop, 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 wop. And so, you know, she gets up and she leaves. She never even gives Cynthia a chance to actually explain or actually vocalize what it was that she said that was in Kenya's defense. And even like Cynthia said, the fact that you about to start crying and you get upset and storm out over something so minute that it definitely shows, for one, a lack of immaturity. And it definitely shows that you are a drama queen. So next we get to Shamia's engagement party. Candy threw her an engagement party. She invited some of the women there. She didn't invite Phaedra because she knows that Phaedra and Shamia, are, you know, are at odds or whatever at this particular point in time. She invites Cynthia, Marlo, Sheree, but they all show up in Off-White. I'm sitting there, I'm kind of confused at how all of these other people who are nine cast members got the memo that this was an all-white party, but y'all didn't get the memo that it was an all-white party. So when Shamia shows up, you know, she's all excited, you know, she's happy, you know, she's so grateful that Candy did this for her, but of course she's feeling some type of way because Portia's not there. Um, you know, because at one point she kind of got emotional, she's about to start crying, but you know, they were just like, girl, don't worry about it, whatever. So Eventually, they shift upstairs to like a like a private VIP type section. And this is where the stuff was brought up where I don't I don't like, I, you know, Sheree. See, here's my thing. My issue with Sheree is that, you know, you got people that are messy and then you got people that are extra messy. And 
she's who I would consider extra messy because she brings up stuff that's not even that doesn't have anything to do with the conversation like you know how she brought up what Phaedra said about Shamia that was just up out of the blue nobody was even talking about Phaedra so it's like why would you even bring that up but she mentions the fact that Phaedra said that you know Shamia was sleeping around with everybody's husband in Atlanta but she didn't mention the fact that Phaedra said that Candy and Shamia you you know they click like every now and then shout out to much love from KY but Shamia was like that's a lie because if that's the case I would have slept slept with Apollo and, and and I've been hit on by him plenty of times or whatever so you know, she was, you know, so she said, well, what did Portia say? Because Sheree did say that, you know, me, Sh Portia, and Phaedra sat down and you had lunch or whatever. And Sheree was basically like, she didn't say anything. And so Shamia is kind of feeling some type of way because a few episodes ago when Shamia brought up the fact that Phaedra had hit on, was hitting on her husband her when she was married the first time. You know, Portia was going off and basically defending Phaedra. Now, Sheree's sitting there talking about something I don't remember her saying any you know saying anything to defend her but i mean it's on the cameras and so you know uh shamia is kind of basically basically like you know i need to talk to her and figure out what it is because me and her have been friends for such and such amount of years way longer than i she's been friends with phaedra so it's kind of appalling to me that she would take up for us that when something is said about phaedra that's negative she's pretty much going to bat for her but when something is said about me she kind of just lets it ride and, you know, and when they did show the scenes where Phaedra brought up the fact about Candy and Shamia was supposedly, you know, messing around, Portia didn't say nothing. Portia comes over to Shamia's house, you know, Shamia received the gift that, she, that Portia sent her, but she was still feeling some type of way. Portia goes into the whole spiel of, you know, me and Candy are not cool, so I just didn't want to be in that type of friend. Like, I understand, but because Shamia said that if the, she was on the other, other foot and Phaedra was throwing something for you, I would have been there to support you. And I mean, I kind of, I, I agree. If me and somebody aren't getting along, but they get in contact with me and say, hey, I'm throwing a party or something for such and such. And me and him are best friends or me and her are best friends. I'm going to show up and I'm going to be supportive. And, you know, I'm going to be friendly. You know, hey, thank you for inviting me. Have a good time. Wop, wop, wop. And, he, and then the thing about it, like Portia, you could have easily told Candy, you know, well, you know, got in contact with Candy and say, thank you for the invite, but I'm not going to be able to make it. But the fact that you just, you got the invite, but didn't say whether or not you was going to come, the same thing with this glamping trip. You should have been woman enough to just say, hey, listen, this is what it is. You know, I'm not going to be able to make it. And then you should have called, Sh well, I guess because it was a surprise, but you could have called Shamia after the party and say, hey, listen, I'm sorry about me not being there. This is what it is. Blah, blah, blah. Versus you wait until the next day or whenever you decided to go to her house. The same conversation that Faye, and it was so funny. It's like you got to keep your eye open on all these women because the same conversation that Portia had with Phaedra telling her to watch Kenya. That's the same conversation that Shamia had with Portia telling her to watch Phaedra because Phaedra brought up that, you know, Candy said when her and Portia were cool, Phaedra used to always talk about how dumb you were. And, you know, how you had bricks for brains, how uneducated you were. And so, you know, Portia basically goes through this whole thing. In so many words, she don't really believe that Phaedra said some of the stuff that she said. But, I mean, even with this episode alone and even last episode, it's kind of coming out that Phaedra don't, really don't have your back like she says she do. Because, you know, when you were getting, quote unquote, attacked, as you called it at the, at the lunch that time, Phaedra didn't say nothing to step in and defend you. But you was quick to go to bat with Candy over Phaedra. And that's all I'm saying. So we're at the glamping trip. So Kenya's house, Cynthia shows up, somewhat apologized. But basically like, girl, if you had to just shut up long enough and let me say what I was going to say, you would have understood that, you know, I did have your back and I did try to defend you. And if you had actually, t you know, if you had talked to Matt, he would have told you what it was that I said and you would feel better about the situation. But they agreed to have each other's back and move on. Candy... No, Portia shows up. No, Phaedra shows up by herself and then Candy shows up with her assistant. No, with that wasn't her assistant. Some chick named Hazel who was an artist that she's working with. So that was pretty much it. We, at Sheree's house, Marlo shows up first. Marlo, Marlo always looked nice, but I'm just like, I know the term was glamping, but I'm like, you dress like you ready for the red carpet. Like, girl, you, you, you overdoing it just a tad bit. So we find out that Portia actually does show up. And she brings Lauren because 
Uh, I'm not really going to get into the whole thing about the anger management and and with Kenya and uh, Phaedra met up at the, the camp and store. That's really irrelevant. But when Portia was in anger management, her anger management uh, doctor. Now, somebody explained to me why now all of a sudden, because, you know, last episode they asked her how, to, how her anger management was going now. All of a sudden this episode, she and she go to another session anyway. And but he did to basically tell her, you know, you know, it may be best for you to bring somebody with you that can kind of help keep you calm, you know, when situations arise and you feel like you're ready to swing off on somebody that can kind of say, Portia, you know, you don't need to do that. So her sister comes along. So the bus shows up to Kenya's house first. And I thought it was real stupid and childish um, because they were wondering, like, well, where's Phaedra at? And they was, and uh, Portia said, I know she better not be down there at Sheree's, at Kenya's house, which that's where she was at. Because now I'm confused because if Phaedra and Kenya were the ones that was facilitating the trip, well, no, the whole shit was Phaedra's idea. So why everybody didn't just meet at Phaedra's house? But anyway, according to Phaedra, it, I guess it was understood that Portia was going to meet at Sheree's, Phaedra was going to meet at Sheree's house, but Phaedra was at Kenya's house. So Kenya, Sheree, and Lauren run down the street to Kenya's house. And then they had to hear up and run back before the bus came. I guess Marlo said, girl, I got on heels. I ain't got time. Now, in the midst of this, Portia does pull Sheree aside and was basically like, you know, why would you bring up the situation uh, with what was said about what was said about Shamia by Phaedra? Sheree goes into this whole thing like, girl, you know, it's it's enough back and forth and talking behind each other's back. So if I'm going to be the one to be the, the, the voice of truth, then I'm going to be there. I'm just like, girl, you just like being messy and like to see stuff get started. Um, and so she goes through this whole thing of, well, if you don't want stuff to get out, just stop talking, which is true because y'all know Sheree is messy and she, you know, she runs back and forth. So it's best to just keep your mouth shut when it comes to her. But I think it bothered Portia more about the fact that she brought it up in front of other people, even though it was just Candy and Cynthia. That should have been something that was just talked about with just them two. So everybody's on the bus and this is where... Well, Phaedra had first brought it up at Kenya's house, but she brings it up to all the other women on the bus, basically saying that, you know, this first night, we're going to rough it. We're going to be sleeping in tents, sleeping outside, ain't going to be no, uh, you know, none of the glamorous stuff. That's not till tomorrow. Marlo makes up this joke about, girl, you can drop me off at the next corner. I don't have time for this. I'm sitting there like, girl, you ain't been fabulous all your life. You, I'm pretty sure you didn't have, you didn't had a, little, a few rough days in your life. Um... So Marlo goes into this whole thing basically saying like, girl, you know, I want to add something to the itinerary for the glamping part, for the glam part of the trip that we're going to have an Ask Marlo session where you can ask me anything about fashion, about men. And that joke just wrote itself. But anyway, but you know, we're going to ask Marlo. So Hazel asked Kenya, like, why do we got to ask her? And so Kenya starts laughing, which I don't really know if she knows Marlo like that. So I don't think that she was trying to be funny. I guess she was just trying to ask like, who are you that we need to be asking you fashion advice? So Kenya said, well, girl, why do she want to know why we got to ask you? Sure. And uh, Marlo was like, girl, because I feel like I'm pretty fashion forward a lot uh, more than you, don't you think? Hazel was just like, girl, well, I don't really know you. So that's why I was asking. But if that's your lane, that's cool. Do what it do. So then Marlo was like, girl, you know, thank you. And if I want to know something about skincare, I'll, I'll ask you because you're very pretty. But she but, you know, she would just be in foot trying to be funny and be shady <coughs> when she said that. So. Cynthia brings up the fact that, you know, I didn't know that she was coming. She was talking to Portia and was like, I'm glad you came. I didn't know Lauren was coming. So then she pulls out this this doctor's note where the note basically said that, you know, it's in her best interest if she brings somebody along with her. So they go into this whole thing. So Hazel was like, well, are you under, you know, the emotional distress or something? Is that why you need support? And, Paige and you know, Portia was like, well, you know, I am in anger management and I'm very open about it. And so Candy was like, well, you weren't open back then. And I'm thinking to myself, she wasn't probably wasn't open back then because she wasn't ready to talk about it because it wasn't supposed to have been none of y'all's business. And if Phaedra had kept her mouth shut, y'all still probably wouldn't know she was going to anger management, allegedly. But anyway, and so Kenya was like, yeah, because when we asked you about it at, at lunch, you was very defensive. And Portia was like, because of the way you asked me, like, I felt like you were trying to be condescending. You were making jokes about it. And, you know, and I, I I feel that way, too, when you go talking about what well, do what well, do you take medication? Did you get a certificate and all this stuff like it, it does feel like because, you know, anger management is a very, you know, people that have anger issues is a very real thing, just like depression and uh, anxiety and all that stuff. And that's not something that you should supposed to be 
making jokes about or trying to demean somebody or trying to make somebody feel bad about because at least she's you know acknowledge the fact that she does have anger issues otherwise she wouldn't be in anger management because she could have been still been that same Porsche that just you know pop off on somebody and, and and Kenya was talking a lot of crap on that bus for somebody who not too long ago had got snatched by that girl but anyway and so you know they were just going back and forth wouldn't let Porsche talk so eventually the sister jumped in and was like girl if y'all would shut up long enough and let her say what, y what she got to say then y'all will understand why she felt the way she felt you know Porsche kind of explains how she felt like it wasn't really so much of the fact that you asked but it was how you brought it up and you know it was a whole bunch of back and forth but yeah I was just like girl y'all ain't even like Phaedra said y'all ain't even made it out of Atlanta and y'all already going back and forth like but y'all know whenever they take these trips it's a whole bunch of drama anyway so thank you all for watching be sure to like this video leave a comment in the comment section and subscribe to the channel it is absolutely free also, if you've missed any of my previous Real Housewives of Atlanta reviews, the link to that playlist will be in the description box down below. And for those of you that um, wonder, whenever I do have songs in my intro, the uh, name of the song will always be listed in the description box, the name of the song and the artist. But anyway, thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next video. Peace.